Okay, and now for the 2020 10A, problem number 21, which was also the 12A, problem 19. This problem has several solutions. Um, this is not the fastest way to do it, how I'm going to do it right now, but it's the way that I did it when I solved it, and so it's what I'm going to share with you now. Uh, there exists a unique, strictly increasing sequence of non-negative integers, A1 through A sub K, such that 2 to the 289th power plus 1 over 2 to the 17th plus 1 equals a 2 to the power of a sub 1 plus 2 to the power of a sub 2 all the way to 2 to the power of a sub k. What is k? Now it's important to note we're not finding the exponent of the, the highest power of 2 available. We're finding how many powers of 2 are written in this sum. The last, that last won't be the, the number of those is the answer. Okay, so how can we proceed with this problem? The first thing you might want to recognize is that 2 to the 289, well that's 2 to the 17th, to the 17th power. And so we could say let x equal 2 to the 17th. Then x to the 17th will equal 2 to the 289 because that would be x to the 17th like this. And so we can express this now as x to the 17th plus 1 over x plus 1. Okay, now you might not know this, but when you have an odd power here uh, and you have plus 1, it actually factors uh, with an x plus 1 factor in it. Um, for example, you know that x cubed plus 1 is the sum of cubes, and you know that that is x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. Note the pattern. It's positive, negative, positive in the second expression. Well, if I do x to the fifth plus 1, it keeps doing this. I'll still get an x plus 1, but it will be x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 1. You can verify this by checking. You know, you'll get an x to the fifth. You'll get a negative x to the fourth from x times negative x cubed and a positive x to the fourth from 1 times x to the fourth. And you can check all of them. They all cancel out except for the last term. So then we can do that here. This is going to become x plus 1 times x to the 16th minus x to the 15th plus x to the 14th all the way down plus dot dot dot. Let's stop a little bit short and do like uh, x to the third, um, which will be negative plus x squared minus x plus 1 over x plus 1. And of course, the x plus 1s cancel. At this point in the problem, we're at about between first and second base. There's still a long ways to go to get this. Um, the next thing we can do is we can take these first two terms and we can factor out x to the 15th. So I will get x to the 15th times x minus 1. Then take these two terms and factor out x to the 13th, which will also give us an x minus 1 all the way down to these two terms where I will factor out an x and there will be an x minus 1 left out of x squared minus x, right? x squared minus x. And then don't forget the plus 1 on the end. Okay, now we can group all of these to be uh, x to the 15th plus x to the 13th plus x to the 11th all the way down to plus x times x minus 1 with the plus 1 on the end. Now we have to do another uh, connection that we have to make. Um, there's a thing about powers of 2. If I add up 1 plus 2 plus 4, for instance, it's 7. And you might observe that that is 2 to the 3rd minus 1. So 1 plus 2 to the 1st plus 2 squared is 2 to the 3rd minus 1. Okay, then what about 1 plus 2 to the 1st plus 2 to the squared plus 2 to the 3rd? If I add 8 to 17, I get 15. Indeed, that's 2 to the 4th minus 1. So this is a property of powers of 2 when you add them sequentially. And so if we have 2 to the 17th minus 1, which is what x minus 1 represents, 
that's really equal to 1 plus 2 to the first plus 2 squared all the way to 2 to the 16th. Okay, so now if we could write all of these out, these are going to be like, uh, you'll have 17 times 15, which will be 255. So you have 2 to the 255. Um, 17 times 13 is going to be, uh, let's see, 225 minus 4, 221? I don't know. Uh, yeah, 221. So 2 to the 221. Plus, dot, 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 you're going to keep going down um, until you get to 2 to the 17th, which is the x. And then you're going to have that times this expression here, the 1 through 2 to the 16th. Now, you can see that when I multiply these into here, uh, 1 with all of these is going to give a unique power as compared to 2 to the 1st with all of these, which will give a different power, basically adding 1 to all of them. So we're all going to get unique powers for every product between these two parentheses. And so how many are in here? Uh, it's going to be eight terms here from x to the 1st to x to the 15th. There's eight of these. Um, and then we're going to have 17 terms here because it goes from 2 to the 0 to 2 to the 16, and 16 minus 0 plus 1 is 17. And then don't forget the plus 1. And the plus 1 is okay because it can be 2 to the 0 right here. No problem. A sub 1 would just be 0. So 8 times 17 is 80, and 8 times 7 is 56. So 80 and 56 is 136 plus 1 is 137, which is the answer. All right, and then on to the 2020 AMC 10A problem 22. For how many positive integers n less than or equal to 1,000 is this expression not divisible by 3? Now, what do these things mean? They're greatest integer function expressions. Right, so for example, if I have 1.2, greatest integer will round down to 1. It's the greatest integer less than or equal to whatever you have in here. Another way of writing it is with a, like a bracket symbol. You'll see that in some school textbooks still. Um, we also call it the floor function, so because uh, it rounds down, the ceiling function rounds up. Okay, so uh, let's progress. Not divisible by 3 for how many values of n? You kind of have to make some observations. The first observation I want to make is what happens if n equals 1. If n equals 1, I'm going to get uh, basically 998 plus 999 plus 1,000, which is the same as 3 times 999, and that's obviously divisible by 3. So that's not going to work. But what about uh, if n, uh, we're going to get basically three numbers with remainders right, when we divide them by 3. And those remainders are 0, 1, and 2. Those are the possible remainders for the outputs of these. So let's think, what happens if a number goes into 998 but not these two? If it doesn't go into these two but it goes into 998, then these are going to essentially be equivalent to 998 over n because it, whatever little decimal amount you create is going to be eliminated when you round down. So let's say whatever number n I'm thinking of, whatever, that it goes into 998, and let's say that after it goes in, um, that, for example, 499 goes into 998. It goes in twice. And so you'll get 2. But this will also be 2, and this will also be 2. Notice that all of these have a remainder of 2. When you add 3 of the same remainder, it will create a number that is divisible by 3. Let's just see a quick example of that. The number 8 has a remainder of 2 when I divide it by 3. So does the number uh, 20 also has a remainder of 2 when I divide it by 3, and so does 35. If I add these all up, I get 28 plus 35 is 63. That's divisible by 3. And it's because all of the remainders were the same. So again, we note then that when all the remainders are identical, either all zeros, all ones, or all twos, the resulting expression will be divisible by 3 when I add them. So anything that goes into 998 is going to create a number that is divisible by 3. 
But what about 997? If the number divides into 997, but not these three, then these are all going to round down to whatever that result is, and therefore they're all going to have the same remainder. Same with 996, same with 995, um, as long as it doesn't go into one of these two. Now, um, if it does go into 999, that means it didn't go into 998 except for one, and we already don't care about that. Um, if it goes into here, then this will round down to the same thing as 999 over n. For example, let's say n is, I don't know, 111, right? If n is 111, this divided by 111 is 9. This will round down to 9. But this, obviously, 111 is not going to go in here nine times. It's going to go in eight point something, and that means it's going to round down to eight. Again, whatever these numbers are, they're going to have two remainders. In this case, these are both remainder zero, and this is a remainder of two. So what happens if I have two of one type of remainder and one of another? Well, if I add this one, for instance, it's not divisible by three. What if I had two ones and anything else, a two, a, a zero, right? This is going to give me either four or two, neither of which is divisible by three. And so we actually want this situation to occur. We're trying to create it to find numbers not divisible by three. So um, if the number goes into 999, that will be created because both of these will have the same remainder, but this one will not. Furthermore, if it goes into 1,000, right, but not these two, then these will regress back into the last number that went in. So for example, 5. 5 goes into 1,000 200 times, but these are going to fall back to the last multiple of 5, both 199. But again, whatever their remainders are, they're the same, and this will have a different remainder that's not the same as these two, and therefore it will not be divisible by 3. So then, what we've boiled it down to is we need to know how many factors of 999 there are. We already said it's 9 times 111, that's 3 squared times 3 times 37, 3 to the third times 37 to the first power. I'm simply going to add 1 to each of these expressions, 4 times 2 is 8 divisors of 999. All of those divisors except for 1, 1 doesn't work, we already pointed out. So because 1 doesn't work, we have to subtract it. The other 7 divisors will all create a situation where you get a number not divisible by 3. The same thing happens with 1,000. 1,000 is 2 to the 3rd times 5 to the 3rd. 4 times 4 is 16. But again, 1 is one of those factors. We have to subtract it to get 15. And the only thing I might be curious about is what about 2? Two? 2 does go into 9. Um, but 2 is going to go into 1,500 times, and 999, it doesn't go in, so it's basically going to fall back to 499, and this one will be 499, and this is going to work out as well because I get 2 of one kind of remainder and 1 of another kind, so 2 is good, and 7 plus 15 is 22, answer choice A.